Big red lanterns were hung high in the courtyard. Today is a good day for the Yuan family's daughter to get married. Jasmine's husband is her senior brother, a man she has loved since she was a child. Tonight, she was about to become the woman of her dreams. Her father is greeting the guests outside. A few rocks suddenly fell from the sky. The stones exploded like meteorites. The courtyard was suddenly ablaze with fire. The entire Yuan family became a sea of fire. Old Yuan knew Nai Kun was coming. Jasmine's groom patted her hand. Then he was ready to go out. But the moment the groom opened the door, Jasmine felt something was wrong, so she also ran out. The groom was killed with a sword by someone else. Jasmine clearly remembered the appearance of the three men. The one with the fan was named Ghost King. The Ghost King killed Jasmine's husband, and the woman who used silk thread as a weapon, called by others as Chi Nyeong, was a woman from Yao Chong. The one in the lead, with a round shield, was called Nai Kun, nicknamed the Iron Hunchback. He killed Old Yuan. He seriously wounded Jasmine, but just as he was about to kill Jasmine, someone came to her rescue. The three men saw a master coming. They left Yuan's house quickly. Jasmine wanted to take revenge. She found a bounty killer. This assassin was called the White Face Scholar. After hearing Jasmine's story, the White Face Scholar told Jasmine where the three men came from. The Ghost King is good at hurting people with flying stones, and she known as a poison master of the Tang Clan. She is good at using compulsions to achieve her goal. And the the Iron Hunchback is a master of Kung Fu. After the white-faced scholar finished telling the story of these people, he told Jasmine the price to kill the three was very high. At this time, Jasmine did not have much money. She could only give the scholar the token of her love when she got married. The white-faced scholar looked at the hairpan. Generating the hairpan can be offset by the payment of ten tails of silver. In order to take revenge, Jasmine could only start robbing to get money, but she only robbed for money. But not for life. She made the bride hand over her dowry. Jasmine took the bride's silver and tried to run away. But outside the house, someone suddenly shouted to catch the thief. When she listened, she realized the person who came was the ghost king. And the ghost king only came here to rob the bride. He grabbed the bride and fled with his lightning skills. The scholar told Jasmine the ghost king should be hiding in a wind house in the mountain. Jasmine felt she had finally gotten her chance. She went to the hut in advance. She exchanged clothes with the bride. The scholar didn't want to help Jasmine kill because the scholar scholar fault. He was just making a little money, so he chose to keep watch for Jasmine. Sure enough, the ghost king came back. The scholar immediately blew his whistle and gave Jasmine the message. Jasmine pretended to be a bride and was tied up in the house. The ghost king didn't even notice anything was wrong. He turned on the candle and planned to take a closer look at his prey. But Jasmine didn't give him a chance. She just did it. Although the ghost king was not the strongest of the three. But for Jasmine, it was also very difficult to deal with. Jasmine had prepared kerosene in the house in advance. When the ghost king wasn't paying attention, the kerosene spread all over his body. The ghost king foot from inside the house to outside the house and before the scholar told Jasmine the ghost king actually had to fans on his body the fan that he held in his hand every day hidden inside is a flint for lighting fire and the other fan of the ghost king is his killing technique the fan is filled with ecstasy in order to deal with the demon king's ecstasy the scholar gave Jasmine a ball of antidote in advance the ghost king is good at using fire but he eventually died because of fire Jasmine thought of the night her family was destroyed she stabbed her sword into the ghost king's throat Jasmine finally killed her first enemy with her own hands the scholar told Jasmine Jasmine. Jasmine's Kung Fu was fierce, but there was no toughness to it, although Jasmine won against the Ghost King. But if she meets a real master, Jasmine was destined to be defeated by someone else. Jasmine felt that her father was already one of the few masters in the Jiong Hu. With her own family's martial arts, she should have no problem. The scholar stepped in directly and instructed Jasmine's swordplay. <laughs> Jasmine realized for the first time that her Kung Fu was no match for the scholar, was simply too weak to fight. She had never seen the scholar's Kung Fu before. The scholar's martial arts skills was so strong that it was beyond her reach. In Nikon's lair, several of Nikon's men were eating meat with Nikon's son. If they weren't paying attention, they ate the finger of the ghost king they brought back. The children vomited. Nikon told his son to leave and then asked his men to find out who killed the ghost king. The scholar took Jasmine to Miao Chong. The two of them asked for a top classroom and in the distant attic, Chi Young is the leader of the Golden Cicada cult. She specializes in raising golden cicada parasites for others. Legend has it that this compulsion can make the owner rich overnight, and it must be fed by a living person. Another client came in today. The scholar and Jasmine set up binoculars to take a peek. The 
man died in the worm raised by Qin Yong. Originally, Jasmine wanted to save him, but the scholar stopped him. The next day, two more big customers came to Qin Yong's place. They were carrying a big box. They looked like rich people. Jasmine also joined the group. As soon as they entered the room, Qin Yong poured tea for each of them. The two men gulped it down directly, but Jasmine didn't drink it because the scholar hut warned her. The two men wanted Qin Yong to breed compulsions for them so that they could make a fortune. But when they heard Qin Yong s asking price, the two people directly refused to do. But Qin Yong hut already prepared. She put the poison in the tea in advance. <laughs> They were dragged into the pile of parasites, and Qin Yong called out Jasmine's name. She knew that Jasmine was coming to kill her. The two women fought in the room, although Jasmine had already prepared shackles. But for Qin Yong, Kung Fu strength is the most important thing. Qin Yong controlled her to men. Her men were like zombies. They attacked Jasmine. Jasmine was obviously no match for them. At the critical moment, the scholar arrived. He stabbed his sword through Qin Yong's throat and then kicked Qin Yong into the pile of parasites. When a mantis is trying to catch a cicada, a canary is behind it. Nai Kun finally arrived. Nai Kun recognized the scholar's name as Lin Fen. A year ago, the news of the Yuan family. It was Lin Fen who sold it to Nai Kun. That means the Jasmine family was exterminated. Was also related to this scholar. After Jasmine found out the news, she went crazy and tried to kill Lin Fen. But she couldn't do it at all. Later, she was injured by Nai Kun. Finally, Lin Feng saved her. He brought Jasmine back to the village. The village chief blamed Lin Feng. He shouldn't have brought Jasmine back to the village. The village chief could see that Lin Feng had fallen in love with Jasmine. But Lin Feng refused to admit it. After the village chief left, Jasmine lifted her knife, tried to kill Lin Feng. She was finally tied up in the house by the villagers. Lin Feng squatted next to her, explaining to Jasmine why he sold the information to Nai Kun a year ago. At that time, Nai Kun came to him. He said his father had been killed by his sworn brother, and his father's sworn brother was Jasmine's father. So Nai Kun wanted to take revenge. So Lin Fen sold the information to Nai Kun at a high price. But then he realized that things were more complicated than he thought. Nai Kun's father had colluded with the Japanese invaders. That's why Jasmine's father took revenge. Both sides fought a fair duel. Only then did Nai Kun's father die. Lin Fen knew he had been fooled. He rushed to report to Jasmine's family. But by the time he arrived, it was too late. That night, he was the one who saved Jasmine with a flying stone. But because Lin Feng was injured himself, so he had to spend a whole year to recover from his injuries. He also gave Jasmine a year to prepare. That afternoon, Lin Feng returned Jasmine's hairpan to her. He told Jasmine that he was terminally ill and that his days were numbered. Then, he taught Jasmine the Aoji sword technique. <laughs> That afternoon, Jasmine left a letter for him, thanking him for teaching her martial arts skills. But Jasmine was afraid she would get the village involved and chose to leave. Lin Feng was lying on a straw bale staring at the sky. But the fool's Kai told him something has happened to the village. Naikun also inquired about Jasmine's whereabouts. He picked up his own knife. When he was leaving, he told his son he would be away for a long time this time. He told his son to be good at home. His son's eyes were filled with reluctance, and Jasmine finally returned to her home. The place was already overgrown with weeds. The house that had been so lively was suddenly deserted. She stood in the courtyard and let the wind blow her hair. Letting the sun set in the west, Nikon chased Jasmine to her home alone. Although he did not expect Lin Fen to teach Jasmine swordplay, but Nikon also had his own unknown kung fu moves. When Nikon dragged his sword on the ground, Jasmine's whole body was dumbfounded. This was exactly the move of their Yuan family's swordsmanship. It turned out that Nai Kun was Jasmine's father's oldest disciple. Back then, Nai Kun saw with his own eyes his old man. He died at the hands of Jasmine's father. Since then, he has rebelled from his own discipline. He had no other choice but to go far away from home. He went to Japan and learned it Kung Fu. But it was also in Japan that he contracted a strange disease. Since then, revenge has been his only goal. Jasmine never imagined. Her father Hud actually passed on his greatest Kung Fu to Nai Kun. Luckily, 
Then Fame taught Jesmond how to use the Yin Yang sword. This sword technique was specifically designed to counteract Nai Kun's Kung Fu. Everyone has their own weaknesses. Even if Nai Kun was such a murderous maniac, his closest relatives have become his weaknesses after all. And Lin Feng also caught this point. So today, Nai Kun finally lost. Lin Feng told Nai Kun that he was also suffering from an incurable disease. In the end, Nai Kun actually made his son to kneel in front of Jesmond. Jasmine wanted to spare Nai Kun, but Nai Kun still chose to pretend to do it. Jasmine had no choice but to cut off his hand. Let all this grudge finally have a result. After that day, Jasmine changed into a woman's costume, and Lin Fin started a beautiful life.